Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to my Sims 4 speedboarding video or welcome to the channel if you are new here. So in today's video I'm going to be building the world of Moonwood Mill which is the world that we got from the game pack The Sims 4 Werewolves and I'm going to be building a post-apocalyptic base. So I feel like I need to give you a little bit of a context backstory kind of thing to go along with this build because this is by no means like a typical happy suburban family home in the world of Willow Creek. This build that I'm doing is one so far out of my comfort zone and two so different to anything that i've ever built before but basically we're currently in the month of october and for me personally when october rolls around i do try and get into like the the spooky spirit like, i try and watch a few different scary films here and there maybe try and attempt to watch like a a scary tv series i'm not gonna lie to you don't do that well with them because I am a bit of a wuss like when it comes around to the scary film genre. I just can't hack it sometimes. But one thing that I've always found that I really enjoy is kind of like zombie stuff or like post-apocalyptic stuff. Like the, the Walking Dead or The Last of Us, the Zombieland films, Shaun of the Dead or Dawn of the Dead. Can't remember which one's the comedy, but both are actually really good films because one's the actual scary film and then one is a comedy, I'm pretty sure, off... The scary film but either way this kind of genre i can hack and i actually do really enjoy this kind of thing and recently i finished the last of us at the tv series and it just got me so inspired to try and attempt to build some sort of like post-apocalyptic base for if ever there was a zombie apocalypse in in our sims games your sims could come and they could live here and they could have somewhat of a, a somewhat ish of a normal life i say somewhat because, you know, there's going to be zombies outside the barbed wire fences trying to, you know, get in and eat you. But I want you to build something, basically. If ever there was a zombie apocalypse in your game, this is sort of like the place that your sims would want to live. You know, they're sorted. They've, they've got the supplies. They've got the equipment. And it's somewhat of a self-sustaining community. And, yeah, that is that is basically what I built. And so I really hope you guys like it. But getting on and talking a little bit more about the build. So, like I mentioned, I'm building in the world of Moonwood Mill, which is basically the werewolf's world. Now, this is only my second build in this world ever. I only have ever built a werewolf family home, and it was once I got my hands on the werewolf pack for the first time, I came in and I built a werewolf family home, and pretty much since then, I have not touched this world, which I feel really bad of. But... To me personally, I'm not a massive werewolf kind of girl. Like I don't really play with werewolves in, in my typical day-to-day -day kind of gameplay. And so when it comes around to building things for werewolves, must admit, I do kind of push it to the side. But when it came around to figuring out what kind of world I was going to build this post-apocalyptic base in, for me, th this world was a bit of a no-brainer. Because if you actually look around the, the world itself and in the environment, you will see that there are so many different rundown buildings that have got like cracks in the windows and some windows look like they've been broken into. There is rubbish quite literally everywhere. There is like mould growing up the buildings and ivy. And it actually looks like the world itself has already been through an apocalypse. And so when it came around to figuring out which world to build this base in, yeah, it was a bit of a no-brainer for me, but then I also thought it could actually work really well for gameplay purposes if you did want to play in this build. Now currently, and I'm only saying currently because I feel like it probably will come out, but currently we do not have zombies in The Sims 4, unfortunately. We had them in The Sims 2 and we had them in The Sims 3, and so I'm thinking we're probably going to get them at, at one point in time. I feel like we've got so many years still left of The Sims 4 as like the fourth generation of the game that there's going to be so many different new DLCs coming out, and I can only think of a handful of other things that could be implemented into the game that was in the previous Sims games, one of them being zombies, and then also fairies and like dragons and stuff. I would love that, but besides the point, I was thinking if you actually wanted to play in some sort of like post apocalyptic gameplay right now like you want that kind of storyline the fact that i've built this in the world of moonwood mill like the werewolf world works really nicely because basically i was thinking you could just pretend in your head that the werewolves are like zombies and your sims are absolutely petrified of them i don't know about anyone else but whenever my sims see a werewolf in like day-to-day -day normal do doing their business you know going around all the different worlds all different neighborhoods if ever my sims see a werewolf they are absolutely petrified. They get so tense and they get such an intense, scared moodlet. And then they just like start running awkwardly around everywhere. Like my Sims seem to be absolutely petrified of werewolves. And so I thought it would just be really funny if you, your Sims are the exact same. Maybe you've got like a paranoid Sim or something. And they're trying to run from these werewolves. And just for some reason... 
decided to set up base in the werewolf world. Like, imagine your Sims have just moved in, you're trying to play some sort of like post apocalyptic storyline kind of gameplay. The werewolves are trying to knock on your door with like a fruitcake or something, and your Sims are inside, like crouching underneath the windows, you're trying to hide from them. I just thought that would be just so funny and just so, so interesting for gameplay. And so, yeah, even though we don't have zombies in The Sims 4, I still feel like you could you could get your Sims to play in this build as if it is some sort of like post apocalyptic world and maybe it's not just werewolves maybe your sims are absolutely petrified of vampires and maybe aliens but i mean to be honest i never see aliens in in, in my normal day-to-day -day gameplay i'm more likely to see a vampire or a werewolf than an alien i just feel like aliens just they just go to space or something i never see them but either way i still feel like even though we don't have zombies in the game yeah, you could still play in this this build and try and have some sort of post-apocalyptic storyline and your sims are just absolutely petrified of all the different occults. Or, I mean, you could just have a really paranoid group of sims or potentially like family community thing kind of going on, living in this space that may be so out of touch from the outside world. Like maybe they don't like any sort of outside interaction, whether it be from a human sim, whether it be from a werewolf, a vampire, spellcaster, dog, cat, horse, like whatever it is. Maybe you just got a group of really paranoid sims and they just are so out of touch from everything that's outside their base. And so they're just trying to live in the in the base and never have to kind of leave it when it came round to actually furnishing the i was supposed to say the house it's not really a house is it it's like a a building the factory it looks like an old factory to be honest but whatever it is when it when it came round to actually furnishing this building i didn't just want to make it so it looked like it belonged to the apocalypse i wanted to place down gameplay items that i feel like if an apocalypse was going to happen these things would would be in your sims base wherever they're going to live and so i placed down so many different radios don't know what it is, but whenever I watch a apocalypse kind of like series or film or something, everyone's got a radio. It's like the, the number one communication device. So there is so many different radios in this build. There is also multiple different bookcases and books. Because I'm thinking, apocalypse happens, you ain't got satellite TV. Like you're, you're not gonna be able to go on like Facebook or TikTok or anything. You ain't got internet connection. I'm thinking if you're a bookworm, you sort of just read a load of books. There is multiple different bookcases in this build. There is also different skill building items and like all the kind of like fitness equipment that your Sims needs to get like big and strong to like try and defend themselves. There is also chess tables. There is so many different telescopes. There is basically so many different gameplay objects that don't focus on technology because realistically, if the apocalypse happens, we're not gonna have internet connection. And so there is a lot of like, off the grid kind of gameplay, if, if you want to put it that way. There is also different planters in the back garden for your sims to grow their own fruit and vegetables. There is also a dew collector so sims can collect the rainwater and use that to do their washing. I placed down the laundry line that we got from Laundry Day in the little wash tub so sims can still have laundry but they just gotta, you know, do it by hand and wash it in the sunshine. The one thing that I think is probably the most out of touch for a zombie apocalypse but i wanted to mention it and i also wanted to add it into this build is i added in a listening device onto the second level now if you're not aware with the stranger bill game pack we basically got the ability and to be honest i never use it i should probably use it more in my own personal gameplay but you can basically buy these different bucks in the game and when you like when you interact with a sim and you maybe want to be a little bit snaky and listening to their conversations you can give them a cuddle but when your sims are giving them a cuddle they can like place down this little bug onto them and then they can go back home and there's this listening device mechanism in the game where basically your sims can listen in onto the people that they just planted bugs on. It is probably the most out of touch object in the whole entire build if a zombie apocalypse was to happen because like I said you're not going to have internet connection, you're probably not going to have electricity but I just thought for gameplay purposes it could be really fun and so I have like a little dedicated room for yeah this little listening device and then it also plays down like loads of different like storage units and like stuff that looks like it could be some sort of like weapons and stuff. There is so many different decorative things that I try to make look like some sort of like defense against the the either zombies or werewolves in this build well i mean i say decorative some of it is actually like usable like some of the stuff that i've placed down as some sort of like defense mechanism is actually usable and your sims can interact with one of them being you see the little watchtower that i created over here on the left hand side i placed down a telescope on the inside of it 
I was thinking, right, telescope, it's not looking for the stars. Like, you're seeing, they're not looking for space. They're looking out onto the neighbourhood to see who's coming towards their base, if there's any sort of, like, security measures that they need to put in place because someone's maybe going to try and come and attack the base or something. And so, yeah, I made a little watchtower. I use a mixture of different columns and then also live edit fence pieces to actually wrap around the watchtower itself. And then something that I wanted to mention, which I was actually really proud of this idea, I basically wanted the telescope that I placed down in the watchtower to be usable, but normally, if you place down a telescope and it's got some sort of roof above it, it basically deems the object completely useless because your sims can't use a telescope inside. So you would have seen I created a roof by just using these little roof decorations. The ones that I've used, I think, are from the Island Living expansion pack. Basically, just some sort of like metal roof. They're meant to be really small, but I sized them up and then I placed two together and then I aligned them so they're like sitting flush perfectly with each other. And then it looks like a roof, but that way your sims can still use the telescope on, on the inside. But then as well as that, you can see that there's this absolutely massive barbed wire fence wrapping around the whole entire lot. Let me tell you, if your sims are on the inside, they're not getting out. And, and unless they go through the front gate, your sims cannot get out and no sims can come in unless they go basically through a series of different security measures. Now, the actual fence itself weirdly enough was so much fun to decorate because I know it's just like a fence but with the idea that I had in my head for this build I was having the absolute time of my life just living in my own head imagining this kind of scenario for gameplay I was basically trying to clutter up the front of the fence to make it look as realistic as I could possible and so there is a series of I think I used two different barbed wire fence in like combination with each other going around the whole entire lot but then in some different areas I tried to make it look like some certain points have been like broken down and Maybe maybe someone's tried to drive, drive a truck through it or maybe the zombies have managed to make their way through to the barbed wire fence and in some particular areas. And so I placed down a live edit fence. The one that I've used is from the Cats and Dogs expansion pack. You can just about see it on the screen now. But I basically placed it down and then on the outside of the fence, I placed down these like concrete... I don't know what they're called. You find them on the edge of a motorway sometimes. But I placed down all these different objects to make it look like the Sims have basically tried to regain some sort of security on the area of the fence and then on the inside of it i placed down a chest of drawers i was thinking it was probably the first thing that they thought of the first thing that they had to hand so they placed down at this broken down chest of drawers as some sort of like support beam structure for the broken down fence there is also loads of different tires and like graffiti and other broken down fences and just pallets and stuff and just broken down there is so much stuff on the exterior fence and it was just so much fun because never built anything like this before and so to come in and to decorate something like this i was just having the absolute time of my life but you can see that i just created some sort of like little fence around one portion of the garden ish and can you call it a garden i don't know there's got there's two exterior areas in this build where there is gameplay activities if you want to put it that way wouldn't really class it as a garden because it's not exactly a white picket fence with a swimming pool but you get my drift. In there, you can see that I placed down a water tower. And then in a second, I'm going to place down like a bonfire and loads of different like planters, another telescope. There are a load of different telescopes in this build. But currently, you can see that I've moved on to the third floor balcony, which I was imagining to be another sort of watchtower of like protection. I'm thinking if the apocalypse was to ever happen and you were lucky enough to manage to survive, first of all, but then second of enough to actually find somewhere where it's a secure enough base where you can have somewhat of a normal life and live life to some sort of normal degree and you know, go to bed at night time and have a shower and stuff. I say shower. Trying to build a post-apocalyptic bathroom was quite difficult, but you'll see that. But anyway, if your sims have a post-apocalyptic base, if there was ever this thing happening to the world, you know, everything hit the fan, you're going to try and protect it by all means. Like you're you're going to go to town with the security. And so with doing this build, I basically tried to make it as guarded and as protected as I could possible. And so that meant have another little like watchtower area, but just this time in the roof. I'm thinking the watchtower that's kind of located at the front of the build is more so if other people that have maybe survived the zombie apocalypse are coming to the base and they want to live here too and you know they want to be a part of this community they would kind of be greeted and they would be seen by the people in the initial first watchtower but the watchtower that's kind of in the roof is more so to see like out in the distance you know if there's like a massive wave of zombies coming you could see it from afar you've got a telescope and you've pretty much got 360 views of of like the upstairs area 
in the upstairs watchtower. It's quite similar to the, the one over here, but I placed down another telescope. I placed down some like storage boxes that looks like it could be equipment. I also placed down like loads of different lights and stuff. I placed down some different marks onto the fence pieces itself. Maybe someone's tried to attack them from afar and it's kind of left all these different holes and dents and stuff into the fence. I just basically tried to make it look as realistic as possible. I do also put some security measures on some of the windows as you might be able to see. So on some of the windows, I placed down iron bars I'm thinking it's only glass so I placed down some iron bars and then on a particular window I was thinking that maybe someone had managed to break down the iron bars <laughs> so I placed down these wooden fence pieces they're from the live edit menu as well as the the iron pieces both from live edit but I basically placed them down to the window and got these wooden slats and made it look like they've tried to protect the window with wooden slats honestly don't think that's going to be very good when it comes to defending yourself but it's better than nothing and so I placed it down and I thought it was somewhat realistic but you can see that I'm currently just going around and just basically trying to landscape the build try and make it seem overgrown a bit grubby place down a lot of overgrown grass realistically no one's gonna be cutting the lawn I placed down loads of different like dead bushes that we got from vampires I also placed down this little metal fence which you can just about see over just by the watchtower you see I placed down that ladder that's kind of like hanging off this little fence that I've just played around with I do just quickly want to mention that unfortunately in the play tested fully working it version of this build I did have to delete it which I was a little bit gutted about but it's not really the worst thing in the world now when it came around to this build of course I, I play tested this whole entire build throughout and I only ran into three problems one of the problems was that little iron fence for some reason even though it's a live edit fence and sims can normally walk through them kind of things my sims just couldn't walk through it and there was just so many different problems around it and so unfortunately I did have to delete that little like metal fence piece that I placed down by yeah one of the live edit ladders that's kind of like hanging off <laughs> hanging off the base the other live edit fences by the way in this build that kind of like wrap around the fence they completely work because I basically used a mixture of different objects that have some sort of footprint so even though normally live edit fences don't work and sims can walk through them the ones that i've placed down around the outside of the build i place down other objects in combination with it so then still your sims can't walk through them hopefully that makes sense but yeah that little live edit metal fence piece unfortunately i had to delete it and then i ran into another two problems one of them was in I, it's not a lounge the seating room it's not a lounge room it ain't got a tv but it's basically a an area in this space where sims as a community they can sit down they can map out all these different game plans there is a there, there's a fireplace in there but there's no tv there's a radio station and there's loads of different maps on the floor to make it look like they're making some sort of like defense plan or something but in the quote-unquote lounge room i placed down at some old like pallets that we got from the live edit menu some of the pallets that are placed down on the exterior are placed down onto the interior i placed it down a little bit too close to the fireplace in the lounge room and so when it came around to it getting my sim to play test the actual fireplace itself my sim couldn't interact with it all i had to do was scoot it back a little bit and then that worked absolutely fine and then the only one other issue that i ran into with this with this build was a bin which actually doesn't surprise me because at this point in time I feel like no bins ever seem to work and my sims never seem to recognise that there is a bin on the lot. They always like say that there is no bin on the lot to chuck away their rubbish when there actually is and they're just lying to me but I placed down a bin onto one of the upper like balcony areas and when my sim tried to take out the trash she dropped it on the floor she didn't even bother going to the bin and so i just moved the bin to the other side of the wall and it was absolutely fine but apart from them three little minor things yeah the whole entire build works which i'm so happy about because you can see that i use so many different objects in combination with each other and there is just so much stuff in this build that when it came around to playtesting i was a little bit nervous that maybe some things wouldn't work and some things wouldn't be interactable but yeah other than the small three little details which i feel like it's not really the worst thing in the world i mean one of them actually no two of them i just moved over and it was only the live edit fence that i had to end up deleting everything else works in this build absolutely fine and so if you do fancy playing in some sort of like post-apocalyptic storyline you're good the build completely works but anyway moving on from that and actually getting back and talking about what i'm doing right now so as you would have just seen i just quickly did one of the exterior 
garden-ish kind of spaces, if you can class it as that. I mean, to be fair, it has got a lot of gardeny items that I do use on a regular day-to-day -day basis in there, but it's basically one of the exterior areas of gameplay in this build, and it basically ends up having some garden planters. Your sims can grow all different types of fruit and vegetables. There is so many planters in this build, by the way. Not only the ones that are placed down onto, like, the exterior grass area, but I also place down some on, like, balconies and stuff. So I feel like if your sims want to, like, do the simple living trait and they want to properly live off the land and everything that they eat they have grown themselves you've got enough planters for it but i placed down at some cottage different planters also placed down a washing line from laundry day and then also placed down a wishing well that we got from the get famous expansion pack unfortunately the wishing well isn't interactable we don't have any wishing wells that your sims can actually interact with in the game apart from a magical one from the romantic garden stuff pack but i placed down the well just because i was thinking maybe it provides some sort of you know plumbing to, to this build but you will see at the end i'm actually going to come back to the exterior of the build i'm going to add in a water collector into the area so sims can collect the water from the rain and then i also place down a little wash basket thing you know when your sims can like wash their own clothes by hand place that down into there as well and then also actually i place down some graves <laughs> i shouldn't be excited about that i place down some graves at the end of the build as well onto kind of like an overgrown area i was thinking maybe it was sims that was a part of this place at one point in time and unfortunately a zombie got in it got to them and they have been buried in the front of the base but you'll see that at the end but anyway moving on you have seen that i just did another one of the garden spaces out there end up having some more planters another bonfire and then there was kind of like an upper porch bit i placed down a flower arranging table which technically it's, it should still work in the apocalypse. I mean, if you can go out and you can collect all these different flowers to make flowers, you should be able to still make some sort of like bouquet of flowers on the flower arranging table. I just wanted there to be some more gameplay. And so I placed down, yeah, the flower arranging table, a little like mismatched barbecue area with loads of different like odd chairs and stuff. And then also a barbecue and then also that bin that I was talking about. That, that, that bin that I placed down next to the barbecue, that was the one that my Sims didn't think was there but I basically moved it to the other side of the upper porch bit but you can see that I've now moved over and I've now moved on into the inside started off by doing this little like reception room if you want to put it that way so basically I'm thinking if you've got some sort of like post-apocalyptic base you're going to have some sort of security measures also on the inside and there's going to be some sort of like not checking desk, like your sims aren't checking into like an Airbnb or like a hotel or something, but some sort of like area where, say for example, you found some, maybe, right, maybe, maybe some people have come to the base, they've been in the world of Moonwood Mill, they've been walking to this base that they've maybe heard about for months and they finally arrived. Maybe it's like two or three sims and they seem all right, but you want to have some sort of like security checks to make sure that they're, you know, not a bit iffy or something. I'm imagining that they would walk in through the front door and they're kind of greeted by this kind of like metal gate. There is some sort of seating area. I placed down a backpack and then also a box of clothes. Now, whenever I think about The Last of Us or The Walking Dead or something, everyone's got a backpack. Like, it's just kind of like the normal. You don't have, like, a little handbag. You normally just have a backpack, and it's normally got maybe a few different supplies, if you're lucky, like an extra jumper or something in it. It's just basically your stuff, and that's what you what you have. Place down a box of clothes, but I feel like, realistically, if you're running from zombies going through all these different towns, you're not going to be holding a cardboard box filled with binders and clothes, but it was just like another decoration clutter piece, and so I placed it down thinking that maybe people wanted to move into this space, and it was basically just their stuff, but then behind the fence itself, I placed down at some sort of like broken down desk, I placed down like a little open book onto it, placed down different like maps and stuff, basically just like security measures maybe, and then I placed down some like bookcases in that room, also some different like storage boxes boxes which again I was thinking could be some sort of like security weapons or something but yeah that was like in the initial reception-y kind of it's basically just security measure on the inside is basically what I'm trying to say but either way you can see that I've now moved over and I'm now furnishing the kitchen the kitchen in this build is like my favorite room in, in this whole entire build I absolutely love this whole entire build to pieces but this kitchen just makes me so happy so with building this post-apocalyptic base I found that there was quite a a fine line if you want to put it that way in between making something look as realistic as I could possible looks like it actually belongs in the apocalypse but then also making it so it's fully livable and your sims can actually live here full-time if you want to and so trying to find like the happy medium in between them 
was really challenging but really fun and the kitchen i feel like just shows that kind of in a way so in here it's quite a big space there is these big windows which are from the mosquito stuff pack and there's kind of like ivy on the outside like growing up them very like post-apocalyptic -y. but then in here i placed down the counters which are from base game like these industrial ones and then i placed down at this base game stove it looks like it's like a gas stove or something and so i placed this one down and then i also placed down a fridge which is from believe the city living expansion pack it's a bit more like grubby it's a little bit like dirty and stuff and so it kind of matched it perfectly but then i didn't want it to be like a fully fleshed out kitchen you know like wraparound counters and kitchen bar and stuff and so i was thinking if you live in the apocalypse you're probably going to be going out on like scavenger hunts every so often going to like old petrol station old like super stores and like all these different shops trying to find like canned foods and dry foods that you can like use in your pantry and so using these shelving units that are from the journey to Pat the star wars pack journey to batu i basically combined four of them together to make some sort of like open counter space which i imagine basically just has all of your sims stuff in it i spent so much time going through the debug and live edit menu just trying to find loads of different things that i was imagining could be like cans of soup dried food back up all these different items and you can see that i basically just pulled it all out and then just put it all onto them little like cubes itself i just think it looks so fun just so cool one thing as well where i was thinking that the oven was like a gas stove i placed down some kegs which again are from journey to batu but they're kind of on the side next to the oven i was thinking maybe it's like the gas for the oven or something and then on the actual oven itself i placed down a fire lighter you know like when your sims would want to start a fireplace up or something they kind of have that lighter i placed down that onto the oven and then i also placed down some sort of like fire hazard kind of liquid maybe they like put that on the gas stove and then they try and get it to light that way or something i thought it was really fun but yeah clutching up the little shelving units was just it was just so much fun just finding all these different things i was thinking of all the different purposes that you could use them to be like i went through the debug menu and i found this little it's actually meant to be a bird feeding box and it is from the backyard stuff pack i was thinking maybe it was cereal also placed down some i think it's meant to be like rodent bedding thought that could be cereal or something like that and i placed that down into the shelving unit and then on the, the actual counters itself i placed down a radio station like i said in every single TV show or every single film that I watch and it's post-apocalyptic, they've always got a radio. It's the number one communication device. And so I placed down a radio station into the kitchen. There is also another shelving unit, which is kind of like by the archway, kind of like tucked behind this really big long table. That was just kind of like extra stuff. There's like boxes on there, random books, and just loads of different like bits and bobs basically. But then on the actual centerpiece of the kitchen, I placed down this three tile long table from the cats and dogs expansion pack and then use a load of different like mismatched chairs and then i placed down at some columns and then a spandrel the spandrel itself is from the Wales game pack but then i hanged off some like pots and pans and then also some like hanging plants and it just it just looks so good and also the screenshots it just the, the screenshots of not only just like the kitchen but the whole entire build itself it's just I'm just a massive fan of this build. I'm just so happy and just really proud of this build. But yeah, the kitchen is definitely one of my favourite areas in this whole entire space. But either way, you would have seen, I just finished off the kitchen, just did the little like outside kind of like balcony-ish area. It, it's like guarded by some sort of metal fence, but I placed down some planters out there. Like I said, there is a lot of different planters in this build because I'm thinking you're probably gonna be playing in this build if you do decide to download it. And you're probably gonna be living off like simple living. So your Sims, everything that they grow, they eat and everything that they eat, they would have grown. And so I've already pre-planted some of them planters, but I placed down at different like ingredients which are not so easy to come by if you're familiar with the outdoor retreat game pack there's loads of different like mushrooms and flowers and herbs and just like all these different things from the outdoor game pack that basically your sims can either harvest or they can grow themselves and it can basically be sort of like a remedy if your sims are ever poorly like if, if ever your sims are sick you know when you click on a barbecue and it's got like grill 
something like herbal remedy or something i basically place down all them different ingredients that your sims would need if they ever would need to have some sort of medication if they ever did get poorly i place them down into the planters and then in some of the other planters i place down like basil and spinach and things that i feel like would probably be a little bit easy to to grow if everything hits the fan and there is an apocalypse going on but either way you can see that i've now moved over into the next room which is the lounge room well i mean i say Take that with a pinch of salt, it's more like a seating room. In here, basically, I knew that I couldn't have a TV. I probably could have a TV, but I didn't want to have a TV for realism purposes. But it's basically a space where all the members of this community in this post-apocalyptic base can sit down together and have a chit chat, maybe sit around the fire, read a book, maybe map out some sort of like game plan, maybe some new strategies that they want to try out on the base and stuff. It's basically just a mismatched seating room. I use so many different sofas and armchairs and clutter pieces and just try to make it feel as put together from random bits and bobs as possible. Now you see in the middle I've placed down these palettes that are from the live edit menu. They're the ones that I was talking about when I came around to playtesting. I tried to get my sim to light the fireplace but the palettes were just a little bit too close. All I did was just, I scooted them back a little bit and then yeah, it's, it's fully workable. The whole entire house, base, whatever you class it as, like I said, it is functional. I just run into three small little minor problems but I placed down like maps onto it, I placed down binoculars, I placed down like loads of different paperwork, like cans and stuff i placed down a ton of different books onto the fireplace as you can probably see now my reason for this is because the fireplace that i've used is from the horse ranch expansion pack but when you pull it out of the build and buy category it's automatically got some sort of like kettle on it don't get me wrong i do love a cup of tea and i feel like if a apocalypse was to happen one of the things i'd probably miss the most is probably being able to put the kettle on and make myself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee but i feel like to have a kettle in the apocalypse is probably not that realistic and so as you would have seen i basically went through the debug menu and found a series of different books to basically put one on top of each other to clutch up the kettle to make it so the kettle is no longer visible and then i placed down some more books behind it which are from the book nook kit to kind of like blend it in so it doesn't seem like there's just randomly loads of books in one particular area on the fireplace but then also in this sitting room there ends up being some workout equipment i'm thinking if a zombie apocalypse is going to happen you're going to want to try and be as fit as you can possible and so i placed down at the workout equipment which is from the werewolf game pack one of them is a punching bag and it looks like it's got like a werewolf or some sort of zombie on it so i placed that one down and then i also placed down don't even know what it's called i always say this but you know the the multi-functioning workout thing where sims can like do leg press or they can do like arm workouts and stuff like that place that down into the corner as well because yeah like i said if a zombie apocalypse happens you want to be as fit as a fiddle to fight off any kind of enemies but then also in that room i placed down some like more storage in the back corners and just a few different like neon lights here and there but now as you can see i've now moved over into the next room which is the medical room now when i was decorating this room in particular i was more so thinking back to and i don't know if you've actually watched the walking dead or the last of us or any of these tv shows or films that i've referenced but i was thinking back to the walking dead it's one of the earlier seasons and they're in the base that they're living in i can't even remember what it's called but basically there was a medical room and i'm pretty sure there was a really nice nurse or something but her name was olivia and i was thinking back to that and i was thinking basically if you've got an olivia in your game and you've got some sort of someone that's in some sort of like medical field and they know stuff about all the different medicine and stuff and your sim maybe gets a bit of a headache or maybe they get injured or something that would basically be the room where they would go and they would get mended or <laughs> they would like get bandaged up or maybe maybe right maybe if someone's having a baby or something they would go and have the baby in that little medical room i placed down at two hospital beds and then also a little baby crib in the corner for if ever that situation was to happen and then i also placed down loads of different like medical equipment onto the side table don't even know what it's called but you know the things that you put onto your ears and then you listen to heartbeats put one of them down i placed down like evidence samples and little like cotton swabs and just random bits and bobs basically there is two hospital beds like i said but i cluttered one of them up with like a cardboard box and then some other sort of like plastic storage unit i was personally thinking maybe that's where all the medicine is it's like inside of them cardboard boxes and stuff and maybe they don't have too many people go into the medical room that often and so they've kind of sacrificed one of the beds and made it so it's kind of like a shelving unit if you want to put it that way i did also use the shelving unit which is from the strangeville 
game pack. I've also used it in this room over here, but I use it a lot in this build because it is just one of the most post-apocalyptic items that we have in the game. And so I tried to switch up a little bit and I placed down a curtain onto the unit in that room. But you can see that I've now moved over and I'm currently decorating this kind of storage room that then also has some sort of gameplay attached to it basically just thought that this could be like a room where your sims would keep all their different weapons and your sims can also make stuff on the woodworking table. Like I said, it was a little bit difficult trying to find a happy medium between having a realistic post-apocalyptic base but then also making it so this build is fully functional and has some sort of like gameplay to it. Like I didn't want it to just be decorative, like I wanted there to be actual gameplay and a woodworking table kind of similar to the flower arranging table you could still technically do that if everything you know happens and <laughs> you're in the apocalypse and so i placed down the woodworking table into like this little storage room also placed down like pipes onto the walls i placed down like loads of different cracks and bumps and stuff and then the room itself actually has a ladder which then leads on to the upstairs because there is three different floors in this base but yeah to actually get onto the upstairs portion of this little base you have to go through the storage room which you can see that i've actually now moved on to the upstairs and i've started furnishing the post-apocalyptic bathroom now me as a builder i'm very much someone that likes to clutter up every single space that i can possibly i just like realism and i just like having stuff everywhere and normally in bathrooms i like to clutter it up with loads of different like soap bottles and shampoo and conditioner and loads of different towels and lotions and just bits and bobs a post-apocalyptic bathroom i feel like you're not going to have like your nivea hand lotion sitting in the sink or something so when it came around to decorating this room we do have the equipment we have the facilities to do it but i just really struggled because i wanted to add more stuff than what i did just because i just felt like i hadn't added as many bathroomy bits that i would want to or what i would normally do in my builds but in here i placed down the shower and bath combo which is from the strangeville game pack actually works really nicely so i placed that one down i then placed down a toilet which your sims can make i believe off memory it's like a wooden toilet it looks a bit a little bit like makeshifty but placed that one down it was kind of perfect and then i also placed down a sink it's actually the only sink in this build but at least your sims have got a toilet do you know what i mean like you can't be picky in the apocalypse so there is only one sink in this whole entire build but for some sort of like realism purposes i feel like maybe apocalyptic bases don't have multiple different sinks and toilets in them but i placed down the one which is from the launch day stuff pack and then i placed down a mirror behind it which is from werewolves and it looks like it's got all these different like cracks in it and stuff so it was kind of perfect also placed down like a plunger and then a toilet roll which realistically looking back on it actually no maybe you would be able to find toilet roll. i'm thinking <laughs> i don't know if anyone remembers in 2020 when toilet roll in the uk was very hard to come by i was thinking in the apocalypse would toilet roll be hard to come by but thinking about it it probably would be quite easy or you could just use like kitchen roll and chop it in half or something but either way i use that as some sort of like decoration in the bathroom and then i also placed down some storage boxes in some like little areas but quickly you would just see me do it the outside like hallway i say outside hallway the hallway which is outside the bathroom it's kind of like the upstairs hallway so up here i placed down a old mattress the one that i've used is from the basement treasures kit absolutely perfect it, it moves about like it scoots about here and there because basically you can see that i've now moved over into like the bedding situation where the sims would sleep but i wanted to have enough room to have bunk beds and i just couldn't figure out the the situation for it so i kind of like shift it about here and there but in the end the hallway ends up having this old mattress and then a bookcase and then there is also some sort of like fencing bit because there is a door which you can access from the outside and just for extra security i put like another fence there and then i put down this map which is from the discover university expansion pack it's meant to be like a framed print but i was thinking maybe it's a map of the world of moonwood mill and sims often look at it and they can see like new new areas that they want to go and explore and maybe there's a, a series of different shops or something that they're yet to go and scavenge through and so you know i place that down into the hallway but currently as you can see i'm just going around and finishing up the bedding situation at the bed the bedroom if you want to put it that way so for this base i'm thinking the people that live here they're like really close with one another they're like the best of friends they've, they've formed this little community I just thought it'd be the best way to have everyone sleeping in the same room and so i use a series of different beds i use one dirty double bed and that's actually the name of it i'm not being horrible like that's actually the name of the bed it is from the eco lifestyle 
debug menu. Your Sims can find that in the dumpster, fun fact. But I use that in the corner. It looks like it's really old. It looks, it's, it's 25 smolens if you want to buy it from the catalogue. Like, it is cheap as chips. But I place that down into the corner. And then also place down one set of bunk beds into one corner. And then there is also two separate single beds as well in that room. And then there is no, like, chest of drawers wardrobe. I'm thinking, in the apocalypse, realistically, you're not going to have loads of different clothes. You're probably, if you're lucky, going to have two jumpers, a pair of jeans, maybe like a pair of boots and a backpack. Like you're not going to have loads of different clothing objects. And so I was thinking if you do happen to have a few different things here and there, you'd probably place them down into the chests that are like on the end of the bed or in that room as well. There is also some broken down mirrors. So if your sims want to and they need to change their appearance, they can still just do that by clicking on the mirror. But then also you would have just seen me do the second, almost like sitting room activity room kind of area. I feel like I need to explain myself. Basically, going back to, I wanted this build to be as realistic as possible. I wanted it to feel like if you were to live here, your sims are in the apocalypse. Like, don't go outside, danger, kind of thing. But I also wanted there to be actual gameplay elements, so it's still fun to play in this build. And so I basically thought, the room that you just saw me do downstairs, I'll just make it into like a skill building activity, bits and bobs, fun kind of room. So in there, I place down a ping pong table, I place down a chess table, some more like old worn down kind of sofas. And then there was a ladder, which went into the last room, which you just saw me do, which was kind of like the guard's tower. So there is a door which then goes out onto the roof where your sims can kind of like watch out onto the neighborhood and make sure no one's coming towards them. And it's basically like an extra sleeping room for the guards of this post-apocalyptic base. But as you can see, I've just moved back to the exterior of the build, gonna go around and make some final changes, add in them graves, which I was talking about, and the dew collector. And that is pretty much it. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna end this voiceover right here. As always, you can download this build via the gallery. My gallery ID is JessicaPyYT, or if you search for the hashtag JessicaPyYT or just the hashtag JessicaPy. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, if you do like my content, then please do subscribe. And hopefully I will see you in my next Sims 4 speedboarding video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.